been in the dating industry long enough to have heard every kind of pickup lingo there is. From the old school targets to the, uh, the DH fee, all the way through to things like the indicators of interest and the sexual marketplace. Now, the pickup industry has been going for decades and surprisingly, new language tends to get added every single year. But is it all good for men in the industry or does it cause more problems than it's actually solving? Well, this is what I'm gonna be exploring in today's video. My name is Dan, that dating anxiety guy, and if you're new to the channel, don't forget to show some love by liking the video and subscribing to the channel. I offer a whole host of content that's gonna help you guys with your social anxiety and work you towards having a better social and dating life by meeting people in real life. I think the best way to tackle this topic is to probably go over the good stuff first, then the bad. I've always been one of those people who takes a very stoic position on any topic that I tend to discuss. I don't believe that one side is necessarily right over the other. And I do believe that everyone tends to be right and also tends to be wrong. I believe it's important to be open to all different points of view and then to decide from there. So let's get into this. Something that made dating such a challenge for men was the inability to be able to recognize what they were doing wrong during the courtship rituals. Yes, I am wording it that way because I am simultaneously watching the second half of season three of Bridgerton. Don't judge me. The use of pickup terminology made the process of learning about attraction about a thousand times easier as attraction became a topic that could be broken down into smaller chunks or compartmentalized into a process. You're approaching her wrong here. You're not flirting with her enough. Say this to teaser and then go for the phone number. This simplified but yet more in-depth look at how attraction works led to two revolutionary things in the dating industry. The first being that guys were suddenly getting much better results with women simply because they had more clarity over their mistakes. And second, it made communicating about their problems to coaches far easier. Men would go into dating coaches and they were able to identify their strengths and weaknesses in the courtship ritual. Yes, I used it again, don't judge me. And if the average guy didn't know his flaws, it meant the coaches could quite easily identify them and then explain it to him. Either way, it meant men in the industry were drastically going on more dates and relationships with women. So, onto the downsides and yep, they're bad. As with most men who discover things that make them excited, they develop an addiction to it. They obsess over it and try to be the very best in their chosen field. I also think I've just unintentionally quoted the Pokemon theme song. Yeah, we'll go with it. Although there's absolutely nothing wrong with trying to be the very best. That over obsession with trying to use the pickup lingo usually makes men go a little bit weird. When this happens, usually two things tend to play out. The first is that it takes away the authenticity of how men talk to women and instead makes it more calculated, more strategic and more manipulated. From what I've seen over the years, it tends to bring out the worst in people and can turn what was once a good normal guy into someone who could very much compete with Gollum although perhaps a better looking and more well-dressed version. The other issue is that this overindulgence of the pickup terminology can lead to guys getting a bit too stuck in their heads. They overthink things that should become second nature or come naturally, no pun intended. And something that I've known to happen to many men, including myself all those many years ago, is that all this overthinking and planning can actually set you back to square one or worse. You may find this over strategizing with the language can actually make it very difficult to communicate and talk to people simply because you almost forget what it's like to have a normal conversation with people as you've spent too much time using the pickup lingo. So in conclusion, I have this love-hate relationship with the pickup terminology in the industry, but too much theory and the use of it can just backfire dramatically. And what are your thoughts and experiences of using the pickup terminology? Is it good? Is it bad? Is it a bit of both? Let me know in the comments below because it'd be interesting to see which side most people lean on. But as always, don't forget to like and subscribe to this video. I've been Dan, that dating anxiety guy, and let's see if the pickup terminology should stay.
o go away.